Alright, welcome back guys. I guess it's part 8 now that we're on. And the last video I talked about styling and we did some styling. And our calculator, now it looks a lot better, but I, I mentioned that maybe I'd continue, maybe I wouldn't. And as you can tell, uh, I have chosen to continue and I wanted to add at least a couple more buttons to our calculator. And who knows what I'll add to this, if anything, in the future, but I wanted to at least get this in. And that is the square root and the decimal. And I'm clicking right here and, and right here for both because I want to put the decimal right here and the square root button right here. And I was looking, I was wondering, you know, in the button, are we just going to say like square root or are we going to actually have a symbol to do that? And so I was looking at, uh, let me pull up Chrome here. And don't forget to subscribe, by the way, if you like this content. But I was looking at the square root and it does have a unit code. And I believe, and we're gonna find out if it's true or not, I believe that's what we did uh, for divide, the division character. Um, so what I'm going to do is once we make our button, I'm gonna try that out and I'm gonna see if it works. So I'm going to copy this button right here, this clear button. Because basically we're gonna use the exact same thing except for the name, you know, the click event and the content, but the rest of it's going to be the same. And what's nice, it already has a style that we made in the last video where it looks dark with the white font. So let's call this uh, like square root button. And then let's take away the click event so it'll create a new one for us. Um, there we go. You have this new event handler, we'll double click that and it'll create it. And then let's not put anything in the content. Uh, the only other thing we need to change is the columns. So we'll move it over one. And now it's, you know, blank, just like the division. But let's see. Let's copy the name and save. And let's see if we can go in the code behind and do the same thing that we did. Uh, make the content the Unicode. It's worth a shot, right? So we're going to do uh, backslash U. And then let's go ahead and copy 221A is what it says it is. So we'll see if, um, if that works. It turns yellow, so that's a good sign, maybe? I don't know. Let's find out. Let's start it and see what happens. Whoa, look at that. That's so cool. Maybe we should do the same thing about squared. Uh, I'll look. I'll look for that. Yeah. Yeah, let's do that now. So let's do square Unicode. Um, squared. Uh, yeah, we can maybe do like X and then this Unicode. Let's try that. So it's 00B2. Zero, zero, so what's the name of that button? Name of that button, square button. So, yeah, yeah. That's, I, I almost thought that's the one we just made, but no, that's square root button. I'm getting confused. Content is going to be equal to, um, let's do x and then, I don't know if you can do this, but plus uh, backslash u and then let's copy 00b2 00b2 What's the chances this works? Maybe it should be a little x but that works. Maybe it should be a little x, though. Let's try a little x. I think that's typically what you see on a calculator. Wow. Look how sweet that is, man. That is so cool. Wow. So It might seem silly. I'm getting excited about that, but that's, <laughs> that's pretty cool. Okay. So now the only thing we have to do is we have to go to the bottom, and we have to do some kind of logic for this. And I have to remember, I have to remind myself, uh, what we ended up even doing. So it looks like what we're going to end up doing, um, because it's just like an operator, we're going to set the operation to, well, let's just copy this. Let's copy the times, and we're just going to set the operation to square root, and I'm just going to abbreviate it like that. Uh, output is going to be that. That's, f no, we don't need operation. No, 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 we don't need any of this. Okay, scratch that. So if output is nothing, uh, we're gonna skip it.
but if it is something, if it's if it's not a a uh, empty string, what are we going to do? We're going to say output square. I guess we're going to do something close to this. Output is equal to yeah. Okay. Sorry, I'm I'm kind of all over the place, but I'm thinking and doing this in real time. So we're going to do something very similar to the square button, where we're going to take what's currently in the output. So let's call it square root. It's going to equal double dot parse. We're just going to parse out what's currently in the output, turn it into a double, because there's something in there, presumably. All right. OK, and now output is going to be equal to um, and there's a function, it's math.square root, and then we pass in square root value like that. And what is it mad about? Can it not be a double? Yeah, it is a double. Oh, dot two string, right. Because output is a string. Okay. All right, and now we just need to set the output text block dot text equal to output, just like we did in the square button. All right, very similar, just a different operation in the middle. Let's see if that works. I have a good feeling about this. All right, so let's do four, hit square root to look at that. That is cool. Okay. So lastly, in this video at least, um, the next thing I want to do is at the very bottom is where I'm going to put it. I think, yeah, I'll put it right here by the zero. I'm going to copy the zero, put that, and instead of zero button, it's going to be um, decimal button. And then content is going to be a period. And then, yeah, let's keep it as a num button because we're going to add it to that um, that switch statement that we made. And then let's move it over a column so it's right there. Cool. I think that's all we need to do. So I'll save. Let's go back to the code behind. And then if you remember in the first, I don't know if it was the first or second video, but we have the switch statement for all of the number buttons. And lastly, we can do another case. I don't know why it's formatted like this. I like to keep everything the same. Case um, decimal button. Did I spell it like that? Decimal BTN, yeah. Output plus equals, colon, uh, not colon, period. Output text block dot text is going to equal output and then break. But I think there's a caveat to this, and that's there can only be one decimal. So let's say a decimal already exists, and, and let's, let's bring up the calculator. Let's say we do 20.1. I can't put another decimal, right? It's not going to do anything. So maybe we should do some validation. So if output dot contains if it contains, and it has to be a string, so we have to put in double quotes, a period already, uh, let's do if not, output contains. Right, if it doesn't contain that, then add it. Um, and then I think it's mad because we have the break only in that instance, so let's just put the break there, so no matter what, it will break. Okay, so if it doesn't already contain a decimal place or a decimal, it'll add one. Uh, if it does contain it, it'll skip over it and just break out of the switch. And just to keep it consistent, let's move this back. I don't know why I did that. All right, I feel good about this. Let's try it. So let's do 20.2. Let's try it again. And hopefully you can hear me in the mic. I'm clicking and nothing's happening. It's perfect. <laughs> so let's do a division. Let's do minus 
four, so it should be 16.22. Beautiful. Check that out, guys. We already did two additions to our calculator. Now, maybe in the next video, I'll do the negative and positive uh, like it is in the Microsoft Windows calculator, the standard one. And maybe we'll add a little uh, icon. I don't know. But anyway, that's my calculator so far. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the series. This is really cool. This is getting fun. Um, got some really cool buttons. Already already looking like a real deal calculator. Um, anyway, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.